bookkeeping, payroll, taxes. When these critical business services are well managed, you'll better manage your workload. At Economic Solution Services, our firm provides top-notch professional accounting services, business consulting services, and back-end management to small business owners. Whether you're a sole proprietorship, corporation, or nonprofit, call us for high-level customer service, guaranteed results, competitive pricing, and a dynamic business relationship. Schedule your free consultation today. Welcome to Mind Your Business with Darlene Pia Lewis. I am Darlene Pia Lewis, and I thank you for your support. I thank you for your comments and I thank you for your suggestions. On Mind Your Business, our goal is to help equip you with information that can help you start a business, grow a business, expand your business, and even sell your business. When you get involved in a business, you need to know what your exit strategies are. Are you going to keep the business as an inheritance for your children or children's children? Or are you going to build the business so you can sell it or are you going to maybe expand the business and do franchises and so forth and then have the business run without you? Whatever you decide, we at ESSI can help you. 561-877-4662. So today I wanna to talk about planning. What type of planning do you need to have in place before you start a business or before you expand a business or before you go the franchising route? I'm not a franchise specialist, so I don't have my franchise specialist with me. But if you do want to go into a franchise, I have contacts. I have someone that I can give to you so you can reach out to them and they can help you with that. I also want to have a franchise one day, so we'll, we'll learn together. So before you launch a business or while you have your business and you're looking to expand it or grow and take on staff, and maybe even several locations, you want to have a plan in place. And a lot of times when we plan, we don't plan all the different steps and all these strategies and all of the different mishaps that can happen. And I'm not saying that you're thinking in a negative kind of way, but what I'm saying is you want to be realistic. For example, a lot of us were not ready for COVID two and a half years later and it's still people businesses were closed um, people shut down shop some people never really recovered and recouped their loss from the two years of covid and some businesses are still in a rebuilding stage so lesson that i've learned is that i need to hire slowly and fire fast so before i before covid I would meet someone, the energy was there, they had the right attitude, even if they didn't have all the skills that I needed, I figured I can always train them how to work on the tax software. I can train them how to work on the QuickBooks, the accounting software, or Peachtree, or um, PayPal, or um, FreshBook, or any other platform that we use, HubSpot CRM, um, MailChimp, Constant Contact, because we have different clients that use different platforms, so therefore we have to learn a lot of these different platforms in order to be better suited to help our clients. And now, Believe it or not, I read this a long time ago. I've attended a lot of workshops, a lot of seminars that told us to hire slowly and fire fast. But the problem that I have with when I have to fire someone is that I think about, oh, they have kids, they have this, they have that. But if I had better planning in place, like our handbook that we have at ESSI, if I had gone over the handbook with them and not just handed it to them, and we signed the page that says, yes, I have read this, and I agree to the terms and regulations in this handbook, then when it came time to fire them, I would say, well, let's go to page this. This says that if you're not supposed to divulge clients' documents, you're not supposed to talk about the client's finances outside of this office, you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that, and we've talked to you about this and this and that. And I have the documentation as to the date that I talked to you about it. What is the plan of action? What are we going to do to resolve this so that this doesn't reoccur? Had I had all those in place, when it came time to let the person go, I'd be able to do that. Okay? So I'm learning from myself and I'm hoping you're learning from me so you don't have to repeat the same mistakes that I've made. The other thing too with planning 
is how many staff do you really need? A lot of times I feel like we overstaff our businesses, but majority of the time with some of the smaller businesses I find, you're understaffed. So for example, a couple of takeout restaurants, you may have one person in the front that's taking the order that is giving it to the kitchen. Also tidying up the, if you have a few um, um, weight chairs, cleaning up the weight chairs, putting out the garbage, tidying up, you know, basic stuff, and maybe even helping the person in the back when it's slow. A lot of times we have one person that's in the back cooking, fixing the plates, list, and answering the phone and placing the orders, especially if you accept Uber and you accept DoorDash and all these different delivery companies, you need to have someone else that is different from the person in the back. So that calls for planning. What else do you need to plan for? You need to plan, we talked about the exit strategy. We need to plan on hiring um, slowly and firing fast. We need to plan on um, staffing, but we also need to plan the finance. So for example, a service-based business that can be operated online or that can be operated from your home is going to cost you less money. But as you expand and as you grow, if you have to bring these people into your house, then that causes for some problem because people will, may not respect your time, operation time. They may not respect your schedule and may show up at your house whenever they want to. Or if you're not in a gated community, of course. So it's best if you have a service-based business that you can run from your home, that you have maybe a virtual office that you use for your address because you don't want to use your home address. You use that professional business office address, maybe even have them answer the phone for you. All these services are available. And then you also can, depending on the package, you can have a meeting um, hours allocation. So when we had our bigger office, we had what was called a virtual office service that we provide, especially to real estate, um, um, mortgage brokers, um, we, we helped with the um, car brokers. A lot of these guys, they go to auctions, they buy these cars, and then they put them on um, these websites or even um, Marketplace or Craigslist, and then they meet with people that want to buy the, um, the car. So it's good to have a place you're doing the paperwork and notarizing it or making a copy of their license and so forth so that you can give the title over to them. So I had a couple of guys that rented the space with when I was in my other space, and that's what they did. They were meeting with these people probably in the evenings and sometimes and on the weekends. So during our normal business hours, they were not interfering with our activity. And then also we had other businesses that were just starting up and they needed a business, professional business address. They also needed a phone line, so we expanded our phone line so that they can have a designate, designated phone line. Now the phone would ring, they would ring that number and it would bounce to their cell phone and they can still answer it. Now if they wanted us to answer the phone, then it was a different price. So you want to think about that. So that way your overhead is low but you look like a big business, you sound like a big business, you have a business address, you have a business phone, and you may even have a receptionist or secretary answering the phone for you, and you have a place where you can meet with the person should they need to meet with you at your business. I have no problem with people wanting to meet at Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts and all these other places, but it looks better because when you're at Starbucks and you're at um, Dunkin' Donuts, your people are passing by and hearing your conversation. Depending on where, how you're sitting, they're looking at your monitor, they're looking at your laptop screen, they're hearing the conversation, there's no real privacy. So when you have a virtual office space where you can meet the person and not have to bring them to your house, that is great. Especially if you have a mobile type um, business too, you want to have a place where you can be able to do your paperwork. So a lot of people work from home. A lot of people do not know by working from home, there's a lot of deductions. When I tell you there's a lot of deductions for home-based businesses or business use of the home. There are two different ty um, titles. Home-based businesses, you're totally operating your business from your home. And business use of the home office is an office space or a room or an area or 
a walk-in closet or whatever space you have that you've designated to use as your space. But sometimes you may have an office outside, like some businesses, some people who have jobs, they have a job that gives them an office to go work at. But sometimes you still have to take the work home and you have a separate area that you use for your home office. So you have to plan for that. So financial planning, how much is this business going to cost you? How much is the overhead? Um, renting the space, first, last, and security. Furnishing the place. Are you going to get new furniture? Are you going to um, go to a thrift store? There's consignment shops. When I was closing my big um, office space, we had like eight desks. We had um, computer tables. We had coffee machine. We had a bunch of stuff, <laughs> a lot of monitors and computers. And now we're down to less than 500 square feet. So we went from 910 square feet to less than 500 square feet. We don't need all that furniture. And so I did a lot of donation. And then the other furnitures, I had a couple go to a consignment shop. And when she sells it, she gives me a percentage of that. You can donate it. If you can write it off on your tax return, that would be good. Because sometimes when you donate furniture or equipment, depending on what they're worth, depending on your tax filing status too, as a corporation or as an individual, you can write that off as a donation. But um, you need to plan for that. You need to plan for how much it's going to cost you. So that's why when you come and sit with us at ESSI, we sit with you and we do a budget. The other thing that you need to plan for is your location. So if you're looking to open a grocery store, if you're looking to open a beauty supply store, if you're looking to open a beauty salon store, if you're looking to open a barber shop, if you're looking to open any type of um, um, or, um, business that doesn't carry a heavy inventory, you need to look at square footage. Because if you go into a shopping center or a storefront, a lot of time they have 900 square feet, 10, you know, 10,000 square feet or 2,000 square feet. How much space do you really need? And if you're starting out, it's best to be humble and find something small, build the business, build the momentum, and then make sure you have first, last, and security for the new place. And make sure you have, before COVID, I used to say six to nine months, maybe a year of the expenses. Now, after COVID, I'm saying a year to two years, 12 months to 18, maybe even 24 months at least on the low end side because you never know. I know at our place we had a leak and it was a roof leak. Yes, it wasn't our responsibility, but it caused some damage. So we couldn't use that area. So that could cause you to not be able to go to the office or go to your place for a couple days. What happens then? You know, just the other day at our office where we're at now, the internet was down for two days. Thank God I had a hotspot and I was able to connect to my laptop and some of our platforms are online, we're able to log into it, but I couldn't, even if I went home and try to connect to my server at the office, the server needs internet for me to connect to it. So it, it takes a lot of planning and I'm not saying this to scare you at all. I'm just saying be realistic, sit down with someone who has experience as a business consultant, as a business coach and let us map out and you know, just make sure your vision is executed. Make sure your goals are executed and make sure step by step, you can plan for everything and things still go wrong because we don't have control over things. There's a, uh, I don't know if you are familiar with this, but there's something called Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law is anything that could go wrong, could and will go wrong. And I'm not saying you get up in the morning and you jinx yourself, but when I get up in the morning, I, I am grateful for my house, I'm grateful for my health, but I'm grateful for my office. I'm grateful for my furniture, for my equipment, for my clients. I'm grateful for the current clients that I have. I'm grateful for my future clients that I'm going to have. I'm grateful for my current staff and I'm grateful for the future staff that I'm going to have. I am grateful for the expansions. I'm grateful for our franchise. I'm, it's not in the making yet. I don't have a franchise yet, but I'm grateful already for it. When you are in the spirit of gratefulness and being thankful for what you have 
and being happy with what you have, then more will be sent to you. I'm grateful for the people I'm going to meet. I'm grateful for the people that are, that are going to reach out to me and ask for consultations and ask for advice. I'm grateful for the TV station that I'm a part of and the multiple radio stations that I'm a part of. I'm grateful for my team because without them, I could not satisfy my client's needs and demands and the agreement that we have in place. So you're watching or you are listening to, or you're streaming, Mind Your Business with Darlene Pierre Lewis. I am Darlene Pierre Lewis. We have an ask, and our ask is twofold. We are looking to expand and to grow our team. So on the accounting side of our firm, we are looking for tax preparers, bookkeeping, and accounting professionals to help us expand and grow and service our current clientele and as our business is growing, we're looking for people who can help us mitigate the um, overload that we're experiencing. On the other ask is on our health, life, and annuity platform. We're looking to bring on new agents. If you're already licensed, that's fine. But if you're not, we are willing to educate you and to train you so that you can help us educate 30 million families by 2030. That is the campaign that we're running. And I absolutely love talking about money. I love educating people. I love empowering people. And we're looking for people who are interested in doing the same thing while making a very handsome salary. <laughs> so if you're interested in either or both, because you can do both, if you're interested, please be sure to reach out to our office at 561-877-4662. We're looking for great personalities, great attitude. We are a laid back type of environment, but we work hard for our clients. We have deadlines that we have to meet and we want to respect that and we do respect that. So if you're interested to be a part of our team, this is my ask. What do you need? Well, this is what I need. I need help. I need to expand and grow the team. And with your help, we can help more businesses and more individuals not only manage their money, but grow their money and leave an inheritance up to the seventh generation. Or should I do seventh, seventh, seventh generation? You're watching or you're streaming or you're listening to Mind Your Business with Darlene P. L. Lewis. I am Darlene P. L. Lewis. Have a great day on purpose. Bookkeeping, payroll, taxes. When these critical business services are well managed, you'll better manage your workload. At Economic Solution Services, our firm provides top-notch professional accounting services, business consulting services, and back-end management to small business owners. Whether you're a sole proprietorship, corporation, or nonprofit, call us for high-level customer service, guaranteed results, competitive pricing, and a dynamic business relationship. Schedule your free consultation today. 561-877-4662.